Welcome to DIY Guitar Making, episode number 51, brought to you by Eric Schaefer Guitars. To learn more about my premium guitar making courses, visit ericschaeferguitars.com. I make a shallow cut with a razor saw, just deep enough to hold the string in position. For the low E string, I make a shallow cut as well, but I have to roll the saw from side to side a little bit just to widen out the cut for the larger diameter of the low E string. Again, I'm doing this just enough to hold the strings in place. Now you can mark out positions for the other four strings. You can measure out and mark these positions evenly so that the center of each string is equally spaced, but then the bass strings will feel more crowded than the treble strings because the bass strings have a greater diameter. Ideally, what you want is not equal spacing between string centers, but rather true equal spacing between the strings, taking into account the strings' diameters. You can figure this out with math, but who wants to do that? Manchester Guitar Tech's site has a great calculator for this. Also, various luthier suppliers make simple rulers and jigs for marking this out quickly and accurately. Here I am using the Stumac string spacing ruler. Just like I did for the E strings, I cut shallow notches to hold the other strings as well. Now I install the other strings and wind them until they are taut enough to hold the nut in place. I use a set of feeler gauges to determine the appropriate depth for the nut slots. First I determine the height of the fret tops. I do this by placing various feeler gauges between the first and second fret. I then rest a straight edge on those two frets. I adjust the stack of feeler gauges until the straight edge can rest on both frets without rocking on the feeler gauges like this. Notice how the straight edge cannot contact both frets at once. So I swap out thick feeler gauges for thinner ones until I find a perfect fit beneath the straight edge. To this stack, I add a six thousandths of an inch feeler gauge. This is to account for the elliptical path of the vibrating string. If you cut your slots all the way down to the exact height of the fret tops, the strings would buzz tremendously if they even played at all. Adding some extra height is necessary. How much you add, however, is dependent on how you want the instrument to play at the nut, and how confident you are in your fret work. Don't worry though, you can always set it a little high with a 7 or an 8 thousandths of an inch feeler gauge and then lower the nut later in the setup. I use 6 thousandths of an inch because I know it gets me very close to where I want to be, then all I need is a slight adjustment later during the setup. So I have my stack which represents the height of the fret tops plus 6 thousandths of an inch. I hold it against the nut and press down at the ends in order to conform it to the radius of the fretboard. I trace the radius onto the leading face of the nut. This marks the depth for my nut slots. I have two sets of nut files that I use for nut slotting. 
and between the two sets, I can almost always find an exact fit for whatever diameter string I am using. If I can't find an exact match, I will find the next largest file. I can always use a slightly larger diameter file, but never a slightly smaller one. If I cut a slot slightly smaller than the diameter of its string, then the string will not seat all the way in the bottom of the slot. So the rule of thumb is match the string diameter to the file diameter or use a file a couple thousandths of an inch larger. You can see I saved the packaging from my strings because the diameters are conveniently listed on the packaging. Otherwise, you could use a caliber to determine the diameters of your strings. For more videos like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel here. But remember, not every episode of DIY Guitar Making is a video. I like to write too, so some episodes are written articles. For a full archive of episodes, go to my website, ericschaferguitars.com. Click the DIY Guitar Making tab, and you will find page after page of detailed guitar making tips. You can also subscribe to the email list to receive episodes in your inbox as they come out. Just enter your name and email and click sign up now. It's free. While you're there, you can also click the online Guitar Building School tab and check out the online course Building an OM Acoustic with more than 60 detailed instructional videos, discounts to luthier suppliers, and access to myself and a community of builders in the members forum. Finally, if you go to the Hands-On Guitar Building School tab, you can check availability and register for an intensive hands-on workshop with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania. That's all for now. See you later.